You've just clicked on a mathematical grind sesh video. I'm going to explain to you how these work. We write down on the board what we're going to do, and then we do those things, and then we recap what those things were about. So, without further ado, number one, we write down what we're going to do. Four hours of math today, nothing too heavy. Two hours of Tarski. We're reading that because Tarski is just a delight to read. Tarski is like frolicking in a meadow of logic with Tarski. He's nice to the point, gets the sauce across, but does it in a very nice way. So shout out Tarski, the Polish goat. What's up? And then we move on to Enderton. And the reason for doing Enderton is sometimes it's good to stare into the abyss and ponder your existence. Oh my God. And uh, feel some pain. <laughs> That's why we do Enderton. Oh, sorry, I forgot the accent. Sorry, it's actually uh, Indarton. That's why we do Indarton the famed French logician. So grab your textbooks, pull out your notepads, let's get doing some math, and I will see you after the grind session's over. Ah. Oh, you can I just finished an hour and a half of Tarski. Oh, damn it. Do I have it on? Test, test, test. All right, just finished an hour and a half of Tarski. Um, I got a cold right now. I had a bit of a nap in there too. I'm gonna be honest. Yeah, Tarski's a pretty cool dude. What's up? The main insight I had reading this part was he made a, a bold assertion, let's say that. Basically, the foundation of how math is done is through variables. You need variables to do everything, and variables allow us to do math. Without variables, you have no generalization. It's kind of neat. He said it more eloquently than I did. Through variables, we generalize, so instead of having specific things, we can have variable things, like, Instead of having like the number two, we can have the number X where X is any number and then we can show general properties of that X. So variables are math. It's kind of cool. So I still got to do that. I still got to do that. But right now I'm going to go walk my dog and get back to this grind reel in a bit. On a side note. I, walking while learning math is like the best thing you can possibly do. If you ever stuck, just go for a walk. It'll clear itself out. Tarski's just more and more based by the minute. Dancing in the moonlight, everybody's feeling warm and bright. It's such a fine and natural sight. Hey, Freddy. Freddy's dancing in the moonlight, boys. Robert, that was fucking awesome. Thank you. You got a lot of this, buddy, and you got a lot of these. Thank you. <sighs> That's it for the two hours of Tarski. Now we're moving on to uh, a math call with the boys to do two hours of Enderton. Oh, holy shit, this is the solution to all of it? Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, let's get tropical. I would film myself doing the reading, but, but. It kind of just doesn't look that good because I'm just kind of... From the outside perspective, it kind of just looks like I'm a Zoomer throwing my life away on a phone and watching TikTok or something. But you have to... There's two distinct ways of using your phone. One of them is... Right? The other one is... See the difference? Right? One's like... Giga Chad, the other one's like, uh, tell me what to do, phone. Yeah, use your phone with intention. This thing is like the most powerful tool ever. It's nuts that we even have it. And you can just download any PDF you want and you just read it. It's just crazy. It's just crazy stuff. I, I marvel at that fact every single day. Like 200 years ago, people would have killed. Like scholars would have fucking killed to have the amount of knowledge that I just like, oh yeah, just a PDF. Like it's nuts. Like they had no access to information. We have access to all the information. So um, yeah, but use your phone intentionally and then you can kind of leverage it for good. You gotta be careful because there's a lot of kind of uh, little demons lurking out there trying to like grab your attention away. So you gotta make sure that your attention remains with you and goes towards something that you're trying to accomplish. You gotta get it together. Focus, focus, focus. Anyway, let's do the math call, talk with the boys, do some Enderton, you know, abyss stare a little bit and uh, then we're gonna call her a day. 12.44 a.m. So this is going to be a three-hour Enderton grind sesh and kind of case in point. We have done not even a full problem. Help us! We're doing this inductive thing where we're improving that. It's kind of tough to explain. You're proving that a certain set of binary sentence building operations is not complete. And to do that, you have to do a bunch of inductive steps. And like, that's... This, this whole thing is just a single, a single proof. 
The thing is with problem two, there is like 10 of these you have to do because there is no other way really to prove it other than iterating through each set of binary sentence building operations. The problem two explicitly says do each, you know, single binary sentence building operation. So you have to do one of these 10 times. It becomes quicker, but getting it so it was like rigorous, that's what we've been working on for the last like hour and a half, took a little bit of time. So now that that's done, I still have to do like four of these. I'm not gonna do them tonight, but it'll be quite pretty easy because now we have like the format of the inductive proof down. But uh, Sanchez has been working on one in latex. I've been tossing this back and forth. So I'll film a little bit of that math call now. Yo Sanchez, you ready? Yeah. Oh my God. Okay, suppose G is a complete list of binary boolean functions are you proving the same thing i'm proving the only connectives that by themselves form a complete list of boolean functions are uh, nand and nor what's the connective representing g the connective representing g is just like either the arrow biconditional the backwards arrow plus down arrow the sheffer symbol or less than or greater than or up or down wedge or the connectives that don't have a symbol etc so when you say suppose g is a non is a complete list of binary boolean functions that could be you're just saying that's nand basically it's nand or nor but we don't know that a priori so it's just going to be one Boolean function that by itself is capable of expressing all Boolean functions. So you'd have to sp specify that it's a list with a single element. It's a set with a single element, right? Because the order of the, like, the and and not, same as not and and, right? Oh, like shoot. Set. So, oh, sorry. So the set, the set contains just a single element, G. I gotcha. That's generally what that notation means. First, he's supposed for contradiction that G, T, T equals T. Let V be the truth assignment. And then the abyss was pondered even more. So are you doing something structurally different to what I did? Or is this the same, just worded differently? It's very structurally different. Yeah, this feels a lot different than mine. Do you like this more? You like it the way you did it more? This is a visual, rigorous proof in like four paragraphs, basically. So yeah, it's better. Check out mine on, uh, the p picture I sent is pretty same length. I think it was the same level of rigor. Yeah, but that's not the whole proof, right? You're just like going case by case and doing 16 cases. I'm doing everything at once. What do you mean? This is a solution to the whole exercise. Oh, holy shit. This is a solution to all of it? That's what I'm trying to say. What? Oh, you just went 360 no-scope on him. What? So I guess I take that back, vlog. You could do it all in one go. Sort of depressing. In particular, no formula in W represent... Oh, this is actually... This is a... This is going to take a while to parse through. Can you walk me through it a bit? Okay, fine. So the first thing that I do...